Welcome to the Real Estate Investment Nomad Podcast. I am your host, Natalie Salas, an international real estate expert. Join me as we explore the thrilling world of global real estate. We'll uncover diverse international markets, backed by solid data and engaging insights. Each episode features expert guests from the hottest markets, providing you with the knowledge to invest wisely and successfully. Whether you are a local realtor aiming to go global or an investor curious about international opportunities, this is the podcast for you. Get ready to transform your approach and achieve global real estate success to become a real estate investment nomad. Hello, everybody. Um, Natalie with Unicorn Properties. We are in our real estate investment nomad podcast and with a very special guest because I've seen her work through a lot of uphill on the international part of things when it comes to our company. And I'll introduce you to our senior vice president, Megan Kelly from EXP. And we're going to chat about everything that has to do with global operations because it's definitely not easy. And I want to showcase you, Megan, because you do so much work in behind the scenes that probably nobody sees you know, right away. It's like a work in progress. So thank you so much for being with us. And it's an honor to have you here after seeing so much work that you do. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's a uh, operations is one of those things. If everything is working well, nobody notices it. But if something goes wrong, everyone knows what operations is. So I appreciate that. Um, thank you for having me. I know I, I've been with EXP Realty for over four years now. I was lucky enough to join back in 2020, right before we started opening 20 countries, starting with South Africa. Now we're at a total of 24. And it's been an amazing journey. I came from Realogy, now known as Anywhere, and I was there for 18 years. I learned a lot about global real estate, working at Sotheby's Realty for eight years as director of operations there. And that gave me a really good opportunity to understand growth and international and cultures and just the differences with everything. So coming over to EXP, I was so excited to be able to help grow this and be a big part of this and just work with the team, work with Glenn, work with, you know, everyone here to really just push the growth for international and help our agents. It's been a wild ride, but I love it. <laughs> That's a nice uh, background because many people just, I feel like it's only four years, but it, it feels like a decade because it, so much has happened in four years and I've only been in the company for maybe three years, but it's been like a ramp up nonstop. I'm sure your phone doesn't stop ringing. There's always some something to get taken care of. And especially when it comes to, to international and the behind the scenes that nobody sees, uh, because it's, it's quite a little bit of work, not only in the research, but also in the implementation. Do you have any examples of, a, let's say South Africa as an example, you know, uh, you guys kind of put it in the map because maybe nobody was thinking about South Africa as a destination, but when you see Africa, it's growing so quickly in different areas that, Unless you're there, you just don't notice too much or you hear about it. How was the transition to opening, let's say, this country that is going to be so different from the U.S.? So it's a key to our success is that we hire a local leader. So we're not a franchise. We are the brokerage in every country we are in. So we're not trying to tell somebody in South Africa how to do real estate as a U.S. agent would or somebody local. The the leadership there, Andrew Thompson, is amazing. So we're very lucky with that as well. He has built such a great experience for our agents in South Africa. I think it's our largest one now. I'm going to mess up the number, but I, working with them to support their growth was my key initiative. So looking at what do we have that we can provide them that they can adapt to their local business? So looking at things like training, Obviously, our U.S. training is not going to make sense in South Africa. So we you know, adapted it so that it's easier to use and then provide trainings to the in-country team so that they can then adapt it to their local market, add in their own. They have a trainer in South Africa who's amazing as well and has done wonders with what you know the baseline that we provided them. And so things like that, we try to support the country in their launch and then to be successful with some broader, more scalable items that they can then take and really just make it their own and make it work for the agents within the country. Gotcha. And once you open a country, I'm sure there's a lot of homework behind the scenes and before the decision gets made on which country 
it's going to be open next probably can you walk us a little bit through the process of like okay let's identify a country what will make it viable for a company like exp and why would you decide then to move on what kind of what's the criteria Yeah, so there's no silver bullet, but you know there are guidelines that we look at. First, we need to see how does it operate as a how does real estate operate within that country? Is it independent contractors? You know, what are the average splits and business models within the country? Will our, uh, you know, we adapt our model for every country we go into. We don't take the U.S. model and copy and paste it, but will our a version of our model work within that country and be attractive to agents? We look at legal you know, just set up. What can we do? You know, some countries have uh, foreign ownership laws, so we don't want to give up control of our company. So to have 49% and you have to have a local with 51% may not be the first country we go into. We'll probably get to a country like that eventually as we go along, but we're probably going to look at a country that's a little bit more easy for us to gain entry into. We look at interest, you know, what is the agent base? We have a lot of EXP agents and then a lot of people outside of EXP that actually reach out to us asking if they can help us open in a location. So we work with them and do some due diligence, like I said, on the legal side, the you know, the agent side, our agents employees, what kind of things will we have to work through to understand what our model could look like in that location and what would be the attractiveness of EXP there. So there's a lot of key pieces. We also, you know, I think, like I was mentioning before, a key piece of opening in a country is having that right leader that really is entrepreneurial, understands the business, like understands our agents, has been an agent, can really just get into the weeds and understand what an agent needs to be successful in the country, but then also have the vision of what it will be in the future and what we need to do to grow and be scalable. So we have a lot of, uh, we're lucky we have a lot of unicorns out there in our countries that are really driving the business and, oh, hey, yeah. (laughs) I think that's also a really key piece is just making sure we have that right person in place to help drive it and that really sees the vision of EXP Realty and what it means to agents. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've seen that from most of the managing brokers I've met. They're like go-getters and it, they don't stop. And I feel like identifying that talent, is it might take a minute to find, but once you find it, they stay there forever. It's like they understand the vision, they understand where we're going, mm-hmm. they understand the culture. And I think for the most part, they, everybody's very friendly and open to be like, what do you need and how can I help you? How can we cross uh, markets? So I, I love that from from the managing brokers you that are in the team, in the group. And based on that, like the process itself, because as we know, there are many companies, you know, trying to duplicate the EXP model in a way that makes sense for them locally. But the international piece is a piece that no, I don't think people see it. I think the more I see it every day on the operations side, the least I will be the one I'm like, I don't want to do that <laughs> because it's really hard. It's like, Nobody does. Yeah. So... <laughs> For those brokerages that you, you think, you know, they're not imitating, but doing their own way of the version of EXP, what do you think is the runway that they don't see? Because the global piece is key for us, but as they expand, it's very expensive to do that, number one. And number two, probably it takes a lot of effort and manpower. Yeah, and I, I think we have a head start as far as anybody that's trying to copy our model as far as like the international growth. We've been doing this for four years. We were opening five countries a quarter at one point, you know, and it's just been amazing. And I think it, we are the brokerage, not a franchise. We could easily grow really fast as a franchise, but that would be a, a different culture. So I really love how we operate because I feel like it really just brings everybody in and all the agents feel like they're part of the company where you don't feel you're part of them. Um, you know, a franchise and it's good for some people. I uh, don't want to disparage that, but Personally, I, I love how we're expanding it. And I think we're ahead of the game. We've been able to open in the 20 countries. We're looking at several more right now, hopefully soon to be announced. I think we are very agile, which helps us. That is a big key piece. We work through things. We're, you know, not scared to fail. True entrepreneurs, you know, if something doesn't work, okay, we'll just stop that and we'll move in a different direction and try it a different way. So I think that gives us a lot of flexibility where some other brokerages may have challenges with more red tape and bureaucracy and things. We do everything above board, obviously, because we're a publicly traded company. So, but we're able to 
be agile, but not be handcuffed by some of the standard things that other companies might be handcuffed by. Yeah, and I see, I see that because I feel it's like a, EXP works like a startup, and then they're just pivoting and moving so quickly throughout the whole market. But at the same time, it's a big, big company. I think at this point, we have maybe 3,000 employees that are working to support every country. I don't have the number exactly, but that effort is like, it's like an army for me. It's like a huge army and the, the cultural, the, the culture that you mentioned, the corporate culture. I think Leila Hormozzi talks a lot about that. You know, your culture is almost everything because then you just will attract the right people and will repel whatever doesn't fit the culture. And yeah, for, for me, it has been that seen that from, from the people you, you have, you know, the, the leadership has selected. And I think that's a big point. You know, people like yourself, you know, several other multiple other agents that we work with, everybody is a part owner of the company. So everyone wants to see the success. So we have so many agents that we work with around the world that want to say, okay, what's going on in South Africa? Can I recruit agents there? How can I help? What do you need to grow? And so we have people jumping in and coming with new countries and having that um, excitement and drive from our agents really helps us helps us, helps me. I wouldn't be here without everybody. <laughs> so that really is a key piece as well as having that, our culture where everyone is part of the company, everyone is an owner, that we are agent centric, as we say everywhere. It's really true. And I think that the agents within eXp Realty have really helped us grow these international countries as well. Yeah, that, that's true. And I feel that as an agent, being part of eXp, you know, when you say agent centric, Many people may, maybe don't understand that, but from the different type of businesses and models that there's so much in the industry, from franchises to independent owner, own brokerages to now EXP, that ownership, as you mentioned, gives us the pride to keep growing and, and trying harder because we get shares from the company. But at the same time, I think it's more of a, the leadership makes us feel special too, because we're, we're on the ground working every day. But you, you know, it's like an upside down corporation. I feel like you guys are like, no, you, the agents are first. Do you have some examples of that? That how, because I feel them, I have some examples myself, but I wanted to just ask you from your perspective, how, some examples of this. Yeah, so we have a couple of ways we get feedback to start with. We have agent advisory councils in each country and also an international agent advisory council. So we make sure that we're in close contact with them as much as possible to understand any challenges or thoughts they have. But in addition to that, we don't want to limit it to that team. So we have a form that agents can fill out that populates into our Trello board. And we review it with leadership every Monday for any inquiries, thoughts, questions that have come in. And it could be from any agent anywhere in the world to see, you know, what are we doing? What can we do better? What's working? What's not working? Uh, so there's a, a lot of ways that we receive feedback from agents, which I think is really cool. I'm blanking on an example. Isn't that crazy? There's so many things we've done. We looked at, you know, the mentor program. We've gotten feedback from an AAC in one of our countries that the way it's set up is not working in their market. So we've adapted the uh, mentor program to make more sense in their market. We don't just say, no, this is what we do take it, have a good time. <laughs> yeah. So there's always constant feedback and iteration on what we're doing and how we work with the countries and taking in their feedback and making sure that what we're doing makes sense. You know, we have another country we're working with on some of the CRM functionality and their website, uh, listening to them and making changes. You know, there's just a lot. And it all starts at the top. You know, Glenn is very very keen on making sure that we're working and listening to all of the agents and adapting and not getting stuck in old ways or old corporate bureaucracies. If there's something not working, we need to listen and we need to figure out the solution and go forward and let's do it fast. And that is felt in from the sales size perspective, especially the technology that EXP uses and going back a little bit on the foundation and how EXP grew so much, uh, technology has been helping us to do just that because many, I, I feel many local brokerages get stuck on their market, but you cannot expand from that. You know, it's realty of X city and then you are bounded to the name, right? It's like, you're the realty of that city, but that's it. So for me, like when you mentioned the mentorship program and how it has been helping. So I'm able to have agents in any other state in the US and agents part of our team and our downline and also other countries. Because some people are like, how do you have agents 
in London. I was just talking to James earlier about a deal in UK. And I don't know much about the, the market in UK, but he knows 100% his market. So we can work together on that. Uh, but if I onboard a new agent that is in the UK, I can find a local mentor that helps them locally. So it's not like they have to join a team that is necessarily in their geographical location. We can actually attract agents around the world, have them in our downline and by the resources EXP provides, having to have the local support as well. Right? Yes. Yes. And that's a key thing. I think it's, you know, the real estate is different in every country. And I know everybody under, like knows this, but as you really start to dig into it, the nuances are phenomenal. I mean, just if they're between licensing and not licensed, licensed agents is, you know, it could be licensed agents that have to have a four-year college degree uh, in order to be a real estate agent in certain countries. You could have to do an internship with an agent for a year before you can go out on your own. You know, there's a lot of differences for every country just on licensing alone. And then add to that the way that business is done. Some countries, you know, you have to take into account the culture. Some countries, it's a handshake and you need to understand how that market works. Some countries, it's 80 pages of documents that are, no, I'm sorry, we have one country that has almost 80 different documents that have to go through in order to do a closing. Um, so that can be a little bit shocking to somebody who is coming from a different culture and different way of doing real estate. So you really need to find those people within the country that can help your agent that you brought on board navigate, especially if they're a new agent to the market or to real estate in general, because it's different and you need somebody. I don't even, I don't know how to do business in all the countries. And I say that all the time. Well, I don't know how to run a real estate brokerage in Portugal. Like <laughs> it's not what I do. <laughs> so we need those local experts, like the leaders and the local teams that really run the business there. They're in charge of running the business. We just support them. So having the agents and the local teams support agents that are brought on board from somebody like you or some of our other agent attractors has really been a key also to the success of this. Yeah, I think because you don't know who's going to be in your family. I call it the, the family tree at EXP. Each family tree has their style and their way of being. But having that upline helps us on the marketing side. If we're, I'm, I'm into marketing and content creation. So I joined a, a family that was orient, you know, more focused on that. But also, attract, you know, being able to, through technology, because we have the metaverse, when, before it was cool, we were already in the metaverse with EXP, with technology. And the, the being agile in that way has been able to allow us to test some tools, some things work, some, th some things, you know, get removed, and then we keep going. So I like that, the mindset of having EXP be that, you know, like, hey, we work play together, we're going to work together. If it works out, awesome. If it doesn't, we'll move on. And yeah. what would be the tools that you think has helped in the technology side of things that you see in the operations side, at least, that probably we don't see it or sometimes we don't get to test because you guys are betting them all the time and maybe get rid of it before it reaches us. So I feel like you're like the, the protector of the agents, you know, like what it can work for them for operations. What are some technologies that are your favorite or that you see working that, that you use in the leadership side of things? One thing we're launching very shortly, we've already announced it, but in the next week or so, we should be launching to a limited group, like you said, so we can make sure everything works well and then get it out to all the agents. In Europe is a tool called Home Hunter. It's a company that uh, Glenn had found and worked with and passed over to us to get this thing going. It's a property search tool that allows agents and clients to find homes based on like specific pre preferences and criteria, which sounds easy if you're coming from the U.S., but we don't have MLSs outside the U.S. So in order to have, you know, a, some your client look at all of your listings, they're going to 12 different websites. I realize we do that here, but there is a centralized place with MLS that people can say, yes, I like this one or whatever that is. With Home Hunter, what an agent is able to do is to send their client a link and say, click on this link join Home Hunter, and then just go look at all the websites, look at the right moves, the idealistas, wherever it is in the world that you're looking, and you can save listings to that. 
and be able to get suggested listings from it as well as the client based on your search history and your preferences. And then your agent was able to see that and see what you're looking at. And you can use that tool to really narrow down what that person's looking for, share with them different listings that you've found instead of having it be in disparate places and multiple websites and, you know, trying to find all of it, all of it at once. So it's really meant to streamline, you know, the whole process overall for both sides to be honest. So I'm really excited for that to come out. I think that's going to be a huge thing for us and really thankful for leadership bringing that to us to get it out there and really thankful with all the agents who tested it already and have been working with us because we need to make sure it works, honestly. So that's been one really great thing. We are involved in the International MLS Forum that's coming up and I'm very excited about that. Glenn will be speaking there and it's basically looking at, you know, a standardization of parameters for international MLS. And this group that has been leading this is amazing and very forward thinking. And it's how do we streamline this? How do we have some kind of standards for an international MLS that all of these different people are trying to create versus having, again, multiple different MLSs with different standards and different um, ideas of what works, what doesn't work. Um, this forum is bringing people from all over um, the industry and all over the world together to be able to discuss what makes sense in the international MLS area and really just come together and try to standardize it. So I'm really excited about that. That'll be cool. I get to participate on a panel there. So that'll be a lot of fun. And there's a lot of open discussion that will be happening. And I just think it really solidifies our, our goal towards driving, you know, like the virtual office, the ease of use of all of these tools and systems and building out the future for international real estate. So I'm kind of proud and excited that we get to be a part of it. Yeah. And I saw the conference and I'll, I'll see you there in Italy because I didn't know much about it until I was like, Jason sent me a flyer. And I'm like, do you want to, who's coming to Italy to this conference? I'm like, that seems interesting. It's international real estate. So anything that has to do with that, I'm like, so I'll see you there. And I'm excited for it because I, a lot of people, like you said, around the world trying to create similar MLSs, but it's still fractionated. They don't talk to each other. And when it doesn't mm -hmm. talk to each other, that's the data, you know, when it's not consistent. And like many countries, you can have the same property listed by five different agents at five different price ranges. So the client never knows what's the current price. It's like you're shooting in the dark. And when it comes to comparables too, it's hard to do comparing one country to the other because of the currency and the exchange rate and the location and the language and the size <laughs> because it's like how do you standardize everything right like I want to see it in square feet and this person wants to see in square meters and yep. you come back and forth from there so I'm excited for the conference in Milan for the, the MLS forum and yeah, I didn't Jason, about it. Jason yeah. invited us as well he brought us in so I have to give him credit for you know having that idea as well. So I'm excited. I'm I'm excited to see you again. I, I think I saw you at your first conference. Yes. We met your first conference. <laughs> you came right up to me. You're like, hi, I'm Natalie. And it was awesome. <laughs> yeah. I never no, forgot you. <laughs> no, I mean, like my intention with EXP, joining EXP, my reason was like, it's an international company. I don't have to go to each different country to set up a company, you know, because starting a company can be a pain in the behind if you're just by yourself. And if you have different companies, because many people want to expand internationally and they're like, oh, maybe I set up a, a brokerage there. And I'm like, good luck. That's a lot of work <laughs> because mm -hmm. I set up a company in Mexico and it's a lot of maintenance. You have to like, and I, that was before EXP. And because I was like, maybe if I want to do business in Mexico, I set up a company, like an LLC type of company in Mexico. But then I didn't know you had to do your taxes every single month. I was like, and now I'm like, I have to pay the accountant every single month. So if everybody wants to expand like internationally, you still have to do all the legwork, plus the corporation, plus the maintenance of that and all the expenses that come with it to maybe or may, might not have transaction mm -hmm. and justify the expense. So to me, the reason of jumping to EXP first, what my, my goal was global. I was like, you guys are everywhere in 24 countries. It was an easy decision <laughs> if you have the, the access to the databases and the different portals that we have within each each country, I think. And for that, I was curious because you might have quite the busy travel schedule. I don't know if you travel every month or once every so often or just for conference or ad hoc request. How is your life, you know, your personal life when it comes to traveling? And is it exciting for you? Is it something like, oh no, I have to 
pick up, you know, pack again and go. Like you're always away from home. Lucky, luckily, I'm not always away from home. I, I'm not built to be always gone. I'm very much a homebody and I get home and I have some alone time and decompress. Uh, so I would say probably on average, I travel once every other month or every three months or so. And then usually I try to make it a, a worthwhile trip, not just in and out. I went to this year, I didn't travel too much. I went to um, Marbella in Spain to speak at an event that Joaquin or um, leader there was putting on. I've been to South Africa in the past, which was beautiful and went in a few days early by myself and did a little shark diving and things. And, you know, going to Milan in a little bit. Uh, I didn't really travel too much this year, to be honest with you. It's been a, a year of cleaning things up, getting things done, making sure we have all the right processes and SOPs in place. We move very fast in the beginning and we have some, you know, things to do, but that's why I like this company because we do things that, you know, we call it safe to try. Like, is it going to take down the company? Like if we try to open in this country or or if we try a new tool or system or way of doing things in another country that we're open in. And if not, no, it's safe to try. Let's try it. Let's go. Let's do it. So we had a lot of that this year, which has been great because we've been able to really support the existing countries and, you know, bringing Felix Bravo on board to really focus on growth for international. I think that has just been a amazing change for us. He's really driven and really experienced and has been wonderful with leading the country leaders and growth for our company. So that gives us on the operation side a little bit more time now that he's here to really focus more on like, okay, what's not working and what's working well and how can we adapt it for different countries? What's scalable? What have we tried in other countries? Like I said, that has worked and maybe we can try in a new market as well. We have a couple of tools that we've done that with. We have a social media tool that works wonderful in some of our countries. It's amazing. Tons of leads. We tried the same company in a couple other countries. Some of them just didn't work. It just wasn't part of the culture. It wasn't the way business was done. So having that opportunity to be home and actually work through those things has been a lot of fun as well. So I do ad hoc travel also. You know, sometimes people ask if I can come just to speak a little bit. And when I can, I definitely hop on a plane because I love to travel. I love international. Mm-hmm. No, I think that kind of, I'm, I'm like you, if somebody's a conference and I have the week available, I mean, <laughs> I yeah. to meet so many people in person. Uh, since we're a cloud brokerage, it's we know each other from Zoom all the time. But meeting in person one-to-one, it's, it's different. It's a whole different experience. And I wanted to thank you for putting all this together, which I know is not easy setting up conferences and getting so many people together in, in one place. Like w- what happened in Lisbon, the first international real estate com- convention, let's say, for EXP. That was amazing. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I think you were there. You saw I, there was a script I was supposed to read and I just was like, I can't read a script. I'm like, you all are amazing. And I started crying on stage. It was so sad. <laughs> oh, but uh, that Because I was just so moved by how many people were in the room and how ex- like the, the excitement, you could really feel it and taste it. There was so much networking going on and so much just support of each other that it really just, it, you, I sit in my, in my house working, sitting in front of a computer, like you said, and, you know, we're not perfect. So a lot of times what we hear is things that are not working, you know, and we need to fix them. So to be in a room with people that were just excited and happy and they have insights on things that we could do better as well, but also just really wanting to see this grow and move forward. You like, I can't explain how that made me feel like I could get teary eyed right now talking about it because, you know, I'm in my little, I'm in my square. <laughs> So being around everyone and just feeding off the energy makes such a huge difference for me. And I'm sure I, obviously for all of the agents as well. Yeah, being, I think meeting everybody in person after chatting online for quite a bit, it's exciting. And I feel like it was a room, although it was a small conference, maybe 300 people, 400, maybe less, mm-hmm. which makes it very intimate. And we were able to chat with the leadership team. You guys are super accessible. It's very easy going. It's not like, oh, let me talk to the CEO and talk to his assist- assistant, you know, it's more like, hey, Glenn, how are you? I have this issue. And it's like a family. Right? And I think that's what some people outside don't see. And I'm excited to see global growing more because at the beginning was uh, very few people who care about global because they were all focused on their own markets. 
And they're like, well, you know, I have an issue with my, my buyer here in Chicago. The house is burned on, on fire or my deal is on fire. I don't care about anything else because I'm focused on this. But being in the conference, it was like sharing the same energy of people that were excited of international real estate. And we're like a small fraction. I think that the ones that we got together, like we're still in contact. We're maybe 90 people, 90 people in a WhatsApp group that we met in person at the conference and we still stay in touch. But it wouldn't have happened without the conference itself. And you just feel like I'm in a room full of people that I want to connect with because it's like, oh my God, international, do you have this deal? What happened in this country? And then all the similarities on each other's markets that we don't get to chat outside of that. So out of like almost 90,000 agents, maybe 90 were in this group. And I was doing the math, it's like 0.001% <laughs> people that care about it. And I'm like, so then there's so much opportunity because nobody's looking at it. And that's the reason I focus on it because I'm like, not everybody has the energy to travel to investigate, to understand what can be the issues of each country, and then spend time working on that. So it's super yeah. exciting to see that. Yeah, and- it's not for everyone. I really just have always said, like, you have to be pretty humble in order to work in international markets and understand that, you know, you don't know everything. You really have to listen to the people in the market and understand and learn what it is. I often say, you know, learn one market at a time, pick a, pick a country you love that you're passionate about and learn more about that and work with agents there and really just kind of connect and then move on to the next country. That's usually my advice because if you try to understand global real estate, when one fails swoop, you'll lose your mind because there's just so many differences and just the cultural differences and constantly keeping in mind, you know, I'm from New Jersey, like, let's go. I want to move fast, but (laughs) some cultures, you know, they need to walk through everything with you and explain the history and explain what's going wrong. And I don't want to interrupt them because that's their culture. That's what it helps them work through their thoughts where in U S and especially in the Northeast, we tend to be like, get to the point. What do you need? (laughs) But I don't do that because I know that they need to be able to explain everything. And it often I'm learning from that because instead of just like skipping through to the end, I'm actually learning from them. And so, you know, that's an adjustment. You have to understand working with all these different cultures, what their communication style is even just down to that. And especially in certain areas where they, somebody may say yes, but they're saying it to be polite and it because they don't want to say no to your face, but that's just part of the culture because they're just, it's a polite culture. They don't want to, you know, they don't want to offend anybody and then you won't hear from them again. So it's just knowing what you're working with and understanding and not being, you know, I guess just being humble and just listening and understanding. So I think that's been a really cool part of this journey for me. Yeah, I I relate to that because I'm like, okay, let's go super fast. And when I know, since I'm covering the Mexico market, when I went there and there's certain different types of cities, right? And the Riviera Maya is faster. In Yucatan, in the north side, it's more like you have to push the brakes because people get offended if you're like, it's just this meeting can be 15 minutes. <laughs> Why yeah. is it an hour and a half? But yeah, like you said, I relate to my, so much. Why to- are we having lunch for three hours? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and you have to buffer for that in your calendar too, because sometimes it's not like an hour meeting. It's like you were saying, you know, three hour, the introduction high and, and then the, the buy is a little longer. And having that, no, you cannot learn that in a class. I feel there are so many certifications, so many classes that are international, but unless you do it and you go there, it's impossible to learn on a, on a book. Yep. And that's why, exactly. That's why I always say like, pick one country you're passionate about and focus on that and understand it and then move on to the next instead of trying to read one book and then go out and talk to everybody. Yeah. And how does your schedule look like? Because you cover every time zone because we're from the US to Asia. How do you work 24 seven? Because I see you online <laughs> and then you have to accommodate for India, Australia. You have to accommodate for the US if you're in central time and in Europe as well. So how does your schedule is crazy? And you work from like 7 a.m. to 12 midnight. <laughs> yeah, well, that's why I have the ring light so it can hide my circles. No, um. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know what, in all honesty, it just depends on what we're doing. A lot of the countries are very self-managed. They are they know what they're doing. I have a standing meeting with Australia on Tuesday nights that I just know it's every other Tuesday to come up. And if they need me in between, of course, I'm here, but often we don't. You know, New Zealand's pretty easy. 
but the schedule hasn't been that bad when we start looking at new countries and we, cause everybody the schedule hasn't been that bad because now that everybody's been open for a while, I think our last country we opened um, Dubai was a year and a half ago and Dunia's phenomenal. Um, so she's not, you know, demanding. Uh, so the meetings have gotten better. Uh, but now that we're looking at some new countries, I definitely see my calendar starting to fill up with some eight, a.m. or 7 a.m. or 9 p.m. calls. So it comes in waves, to be honest with you, is I guess my point. You know, there's weeks where it's, I wouldn't say nine to five. I wake up in the morning, I look at my workplace chat, make sure there's nothing on fire. And then I have my coffee and I relax and I have, I wake up at like 5.30 usually every morning so I can have a little time to myself before the day starts. And again, like I'll check, make sure nothing's on fire and then I'll put my phone down for a while and then have a cup like an hour or two to myself because once the day starts it's just it keeps going and then into the evening because we have also colleagues on the US side that work in California so i'm getting messages not even just from international but from you know legal staff or whoever we're working together on things i can get messages from them until 8 9 10 o'clock at night so what's really cool is that i am able to do 90% of those things via my phone so I can still shut down my computer at 6, 7 p.m. whenever the day ends, but still answer questions and give feedback or ask questions that I have to people so that they're not waiting a whole day for me to get back to them because we operate virtually. So we've got between Google Drives and Workplace Chat, Discord, you know, our Holo Spirit board, all these different tools that we have virtually, they're all available on my phone. So I can always just answer a quick question and somebody doesn't have to wait a day. I do try to have a little bit of restraint. Sometimes I look at questions and I'm like, I don't need to answer that tonight. (laughs) I do need my downtime. I do need some time to myself. So I do try to pick and choose, you know, what things are really urgent and what needs help right away. And is this a question that can wait till tomorrow? You know, half the time or more than half the time it is but I also don't want to hold people up. So I've learned a balance over the last four years to protect my own personal space and my personal mental health. But I also, I get excited and I want to help everybody. So it's hard. (laughs) When you love what you do, it's hard to stop sometimes. And (laughs) working 24 seven sometimes. And when we had a new team member on board in India, you know, I had to connect him with a mentor. And when we were doing the onboarding call, and I think it happened to Germany too, they, I, I joined the call to connect them with a the managing broker and then they start talking in German and I'm like, I don't understand anything, <laughs> but I know I'm, gonna sit here. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I'm going to be a fly on the wall because I know the, the business model, what, you know, Lars in this case was explaining to the agent about Germany real estate, you know, as a real estate market. And I kind of follow the slides, but everything was in German. I'm like, I don't understand a word, but I know what he's saying <laughs> because he's in this. <laughs> so it was very exciting to to just not only have agents in other countries that you don't necessarily, you know, the the country leader supports them as part of their group, uh, but they're your teammates too, because they're in your downline. And adjusting the time zones was interesting to me because I I think the most I stretched was to India. And I think that's several hours from central time. So whether meet in the morning or late at night uh, to Mm -hmm. catch them the next morning. And as I sometimes find myself like, all day in my computer. Like you said, I have in the, in the middle of the day, that is not a time zone overlap. I was like, okay, I'm going to go to the gym, do this, that, do my groceries <laughs> <laughs> from like 12 to two. And kind of that's my downtime, but I've loved it. It's been such a good journey to experience this. And like you say, one country at a time, because at the beginning I was like five countries and I'm like, oh no, it's too much. <laughs> I think my first year with the XP, I onboarded agents like in four different countries almost right away because I understood the model very well but that too I got overwhelmed I was like and they were asking all these questions and I'm like I'm new too but I'm like I'll find the answer but then I was, I was completely overwhelmed because I was like Spain versus Mexico versus Colombia like I have to read about this it took me like two three years to get okay I got this and and help more agents slowly transition into it well, and there's a lot of differences between each country outside of the model. You know, we have like localized CR, like local CRM tools that people use. So every country, there's a few that have the same where it makes sense and that it works. But in general, we have 20 different CRMs because we don't want to handicap or limit the ability to do business. So we want to give them the portals, you know, all the different websites that they need to go to. 
so that they're provided the same service as they would with any other company within their country. So trying to figure out all of those things, even if somebody emails you from Colombia, do you know what CRM they use? <laughs> the prep, like, that's going to be prep. hard. <laughs> no, Alter State. And that's and like cool. France has Appamo and Italy and then UK has Loop. So it's just a lot to digest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Different partnerships, different bank partnerships. You know, uh, we have Flow Living in some areas, which is social media advertising that works really well. You know, some of the markets. So it's just, it's understanding each market's going to have its own offerings also. So trying to grasp all of that at once. I don't even remember all of it sometimes. So it's a lot, but it's a lot of fun too. Because you get to learn about new tools and new ways of doing business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think with this, the CRMs and the, the value proposition, I, number one that EXP has international is the uh, syndication of listings, from my opinion, because you not only have one portal for agents and that's it. Most of the CRMs syndicate to other listings that are locally to other portals that EXP takes care of that cost. So the agent doesn't have to belong to five different websites because there's no MLS so that to put in probably the list and other portals that are locally, you know, my flat.com, I forget the names too, but they put it one time online and it just copies and pastes all over the place. So that technology, I think to me is amazing. They don't have to pay for every single That's portal. one of those things. Yeah, that's one of those things when you mentioned there's a lot going on in the background. Listing portals, there's a lot going on in the background trying to get those out up and running and making sure that, there, that there's clear business continuity, especially if a new agent comes on board or a new team, making sure that all their listings are getting out to the right places where a client would expect at the end of the day. You know, it may not, not all portals are huge lead generators, but as we know, some of them just clients want their listing on that site and they're stuck on it. So just working with all of the local teams to understand what those needs are and then building it out and the APIs. We have a whole group that works on that. So <laughs> it's a lot of work, but um, the results, it's very happy. You know, I'm very happy to hear that it's a very important thing for you because that yeah. makes me feel better about all the work we put in on the back end. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot when I was trying to deal with APIs with my prior job when I was in technology. I'm like, this is Thank you for somebody helping me with this <laughs> because it's <laughs> not easy. And, and for sure, it, and I think on top of that, I think you asked us as an organization. Also, when we talk about cloud brokerage and location and office space, sometimes some brokers locally get hang on like, well, I don't have an office to go to. I don't have an office that is like to bring my clients. But since EXP hears the issues and implement them almost right away, the reaches opportunity now just recently was rolled out to all the countries. Can you share more about that? And maybe the beginning stage of like, how do I do sell? Like in Mexico, it's a little hard, for example, if you don't have an office, people think that you're not legit, but yeah. who have offices doesn't mean that they're good. So then what, that's the, you know, how, how can we meet in the middle? So can you share more about those opportunities that you were listening to the agents, you know, put them listening all the time to see what their needs were and then conclude into this? Yeah, it, um, it had been coming up several times. We did have it available in a few countries um, to be able to have a Regis office, be able to go there and work in the business center area or just have a discounted um, office space on your own. And it was something that we had tried to work towards, but we had gotten into a couple of different roadblocks. But then when we were in Lisbon, this is an example that I couldn't think of earlier. A few of the attendees went to and spoke with Glenn and said, you know, really having Regis everywhere would be so helpful because it helps get over that hump. It helps the agents have a place, but also the clients feel more comfortable to be able to meet in person and not be in a Starbucks or wherever, Dunkin' Donuts, whatever your pleasure. So uh, I ended up talking to Glenn and Leo and they were like, let's do it. And I was like, okay, great. So we had the support to do it. Uh, Dean on our team, she really spearheaded it, worked with the U.S. team, which is really great because there's a lot of things that we're able to copy and paste from the U.S. side. I'm a big fan of not reinventing the wheel. If there's something working in the U.S. that we can just adapt to the international, but take it and use the same concept, I'm in. No point in trying to build something completely new on my own or our own. So they really worked with the U.S. team to get that out within like two or three weeks, the announcement and have people be able to go to a Regis, 
bring their clients and have it be seamless. So I was really excited about that. So that kind of ties into what we were talking about earlier, where it's agent feedback, you know, just letting Glenn know. And I think Glenn's a huge proponent of it. He sees the value. He was very shocked that it wasn't available yet. So he was very excited that we were able to get that across the board. So I think it it has been a lot of feedback over the past couple of years that people are used to offices. I know that in the U.S., we were used to offices too. So I don't think that it was adopted like day one that, hey, you're a virtual office. It does take some time. The different cultures will take different time to adapt to it as well. But it's also similar to some of the countries we're in. Typically, agents are salaried. And coming over to EXP, they don't have a salary. They're just working with commissions at that point and rev share and, you know, stock awards and everything as well, of course, and maybe some other, you know, affiliated services, but you're not getting that steady paycheck. But, you know, it's like UK is a great example. Like what Adam did with UK, we have huge base there now and their revenue is phenomenal and they, their agents are so happy. So that was a different culture thing that we had to get over different than the offices, but just having salaried agents and coming over and having to just work with commission, which you all are very familiar with. (laughs) So I think a lot of these things just kind of take a little time and we really appreciate the influencers and the people out there doing business and say, and I'm having meetings at Regis and everything's fine. And look at my business like that. When you see people who are successful in it, I think that's very helpful. So I think it just takes a little time and just some voices saying like, look, this works. This is phenomenal. There's no overhead costs. The splits are great. I mean, it ties into the whole business model. Yeah. And I think that itself has been helping how EXP has scaled and how it's agile to scale to other markets. And to to you, what's the most effective scaling operations globally that has been helping besides being agile? What do you think has been the main feature that made EXP EXP going so global so fast and scaling? Gosh, there's so many things. I mean, I can go back to, again, the way that we're opening countries, working with those key leaders who understand the vision within the country or the market. I think that has been a huge piece of our success, being able to let them run, make decisions, do what they need to do to make the market successful, not be micromanaged by our team where, you know, I always say like, we're here to support the teams. We're not here to tell them what to do. I think that has been a really big key. And then again, I've mentioned it earlier. I mean, uh, it's people like you, it's our agents. I can't tell you how many people I've met in the last four years excited about different markets or different countries, places we're already open in, places they want to go to. I think that having that is really a crux of our success because we have these insights that you guys have that we wouldn't have. Half of our brokers, I would say, came as a recommendation from an agent, you know, and that's how we find these people that are really building and growing. So I would say the agents are probably the the most important piece of how we build and grow. And then it all comes together after that. That's awesome. No, having a witness of that and thanks for all the efforts the team does because it does it's not easy and it's gonna be a lot of hours, months and years in the making to make it more seamless for us to to be able to experience it in this way. For in your opinion, what's the future trends of international real estate that you foresee? Like how is the market evolving and what do you think is the next thing? Is it crypto? Is it like more people going online brokerage or is it diversification? People are moving out of the big cities into other areas. Do you foresee any trends? from your perspective in operations and global, being so connected to global in the real estate space? I think I'm very excited about this international MLS forum because I think that's just been a huge missing piece within international real estate for so long and connecting different countries and connecting different people and agents and having something more standardized that people can rely on and feel comfortable with. I think that's going to change how we do real estate internationally. 
because it's such a huge piece where, you know, then you do have a lot of people who are just looking locally and looking in their tiny towns. I live in a tiny town, nothing wrong with that. But how can we bring all of these international agents together? Not just, you know, like EXP, but you have a bunch of other brands, you have other companies that are operating, building, and there's certain pockets of groups that have captured a lot of their listings, say, and put them on a website. And there's reciprocity between brands and things, but it's not everyone. And having the opportunity to bring the world into one international MLS standard format and bring everyone together. I honestly, I think this is going to be huge. I'm really excited to see how this works out. It's been very interesting since I got to start talking to everybody about it. And I'm learning a lot, to be honest with you. But I did work a lot on the US side when I was in a previous role and dealt with a lot of MLSs and data and for recruiting and retention and things of that nature. So I'm excited to see what that experience can help bring to the international MLS forum too. I'm excited too. There's a lot of, uh, because like in every country that sometimes they don't talk to each other for the data because the data is protected and, you know, sectioned to make sure that you don't compete with me. I have my own data. Instead of that, bring it all together and be like, let's just have a one place where people can have search and people want to buy internationally they just don't know the data and because of that it takes longer to make a decision and that has been uh, for us the main challenge at least in mexico i mean we don't have data historical data tax data who was the prior owner how much they pay for this we had to kind of do a market study on our own <laughs> and well and that's where it's interesting too you mentioned crypto but like blockchain technology i think will come out i'm not going to pretend that i'm an expert on it by any means i am going to start lo looking into it but i think blockchain will could potentially start to really have an impact on international real estate because you can utilize it for transaction history you know PII, things of that nature, and it's secure, and we don't have that history as it is right now, exactly like you're saying, because there is no MLS. You can't say, like, how many homes were sold in Mexico last year? <laughs> you, you, you know, so I think blockchain will be an interesting thing to start looking at and a little bit more closely. I did have some conversations about it, but I want to learn a lot more. So that would be another area that I think could start to have a little bit of impact on international real estate in a good way. Mm -hmm. No, I'm excited about that too. I think there's a lot coming that way. And also how we do business might simplify a few things. Currency exchange rates might be less complicated <laughs> in a way. <laughs> it's more standardized. And I'm excited for that industry to connect more into the real estate space, which is already happening, but, you know, rolled out to the market. But yeah, exciting. We have one last question. This is to help us have interesting people in the podcast and asking prior guests to suggest or nominate a guest for the future podcast that in the same field of international real estate. Do you have anybody in mind that you can nominate or more than one person? I have two people. I would say I would nominate Glenn. Um, I think he would be excited to be on something like this and talk about international real estate. I don't know if you know, like we reported into him now. He's taken a very close look at international and working with us daily on where we can enhance what we're doing. And, you know, learning from him has been phenomenal and learning about more of an agile process and how that ties into our growth. And it's been very eye-opening and very cool. And also uh, Virginia Restrepo. She is our country leader for Chile and Colombia. She's super smart, you know, just a wonderful person, a wonderful lady. She's been systematically growing those countries and really digging in to understand where the challenges were to grow more. And she's been just a huge asset to the company. So I would suggest her as well. Awesome. So now we have two follow-ups to do. <laughs> Thank you so much, Megan, for bringing us into your world of, you know, behind the scenes that we don't see and we appreciate when it is rolled out to us, but there's so much behind the scenes, probably 80% of the iceberg we don't see of what you and your team do. So for that, thank you so much for making our lives easier. And many people that don't know you or you, they've seen you here and there, but now they will be able to connect with you in a different way based on all the efforts that you guys do every day for us. Yeah. And anybody <laughs> can reach out to me anytime. I'm always on workplace. <laughs> uh, what's the best way to reach Born out to frame. Like social media do you have any handles of social media that people can find you if they have any questions or outside from exp that are curious to learn more 
about this topic. Yep, I'm on Instagram, Megan Kelly. I think my, I don't remember my usernames. Uh, I'm Megan Kelly on Instagram. LinkedIn, I'm often on. That's more of my speed. Um, Facebook, I'm on occasionally. And that's also, again, Megan Kelly. I think it's Megan Kelly 55 in the URL. Same with LinkedIn and same with Instagram. Perfect. So we have all these links in the description of this podcast. So you can reach out, follow Megan. And if you have any questions, please put them in the comments. And thanks again, Megan. Thanks for your time. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. I'll see you on. <laughs> see you. Thank you for joining us on the Real Estate Investment Nomad Podcast. I hope today's episode has inspired you to explore new horizons in global real estate. Remember, the world is full of opportunities waiting to be discovered. And with the right insights, you can turn those opportunities into successful investments. If you enjoy the show, please subscribe, rate, and leave a review. Your feedback helps us bring you the best content possible. Don't forget to follow us in social media for more resources and updates. Until next time, my friends. This is Natalie Salas encouraging you to think big, invest globally, and transform your real estate journey. Safe travels and happy investing.